Hello everyone, this is the Awaken as Love podcast and Aniza is speaking. I hope you're feeling well in this moment listening to this podcast and wishing you wellness for whatever this moment is presencing in your life and experience. I recently did a podcast, my last podcast was called Race, Gender and Consciousness. Please check that out if you feel called to. It's about exactly that, race, gender, and the evolution of consciousness through these really charged topics. And I speak about it from a nonlinear, perhaps quantum perspective of understanding the field of our ancestry as we consider the racial trauma and inherited imprint of our present timeline. So please check that out if those topics interest you. Today, I'm going to talk about living life as a plant. And something that has been coming up for me towards the end of 2020 as I was feeling into mm, what is 2021? Like, what is that? Like, what is the plan? And this feeling I cannot plan. (laughs) Like, that wasn't really feeling present to me. What was feeling present to me was presence, is presence, and like presence being the plan and sort of following the impulses of my energy in every moment. And if I could trust that to lead me to what my goals and aspirations were and to not really plan my energy, but to follow the impulses of my energy and trust that it's leading me to what I'm envisioning. And that, and what came through that is being a plant. And this is, this comes up for me a lot and I'm going to share in different ways. I look at our natural environment as, as an indicator and as a teacher of understanding ourselves. And in this one way, I was like, well, does a plant plan I mean there's a larger plan at the seasons there are dry seasons or rainy seasons and winters and summers um, that happens in a very natural cyclical nature in that way there's an energy of the moment the plant responds to so does it have to plan does it have to you know coordinate when the rain will come to make sure it grows I mean the rain comes and it grows and or the rain doesn't come and then it dries and becomes something else. Maybe it becomes part of another aspect of a plant, or maybe it goes back into the ground and becomes compost. It just responds naturally. And I feel like there's a trust that through its natural response, it is flowing into its its highest envisioning. And I, and I wondered if I could just be like that. <laughs> if I could just be like a plant, <clears throat> excuse me, and trusting as the energy flows, like as the rain and sun comes and as a plant responds to it to grow, I can respond to the energy that meets me in every moment and grow from there in terms of my whole life. Um, And that was a really, it just made sense. Also, did it make sense? Of course, it offered some anxiety at moments. I have an amazing mentor called Judith and I'll have her on this podcast at some point. And when I shared this with her, she shared with me that there's actually a term in science called stimmergy that expresses this. And it comes from this concept that nothing in the universe is chaos, that there's organization to it all. In the same way as that, you probably can hear that loud sound. <laughs> Lots of construction is happening here. In the same way as that the air grab moves sand and it forms these sand dunes, and the sand dunes are in these beautiful artistic, like geometric shapes, is the same way that there is no, there's nothing chaotic to the universe, and that the energy knows itself and it's forming itself into the into the patterning of its like in its natural perfection. And it's sort of the way no two soul flakes are the same and that they each have a unique design. It's it's in the way that nature forms these beautiful patterns naturally because it is within the impetus of nature to form like a, a like a crystal order, like of the macabre, of the flower of life. 
and it's trusting oneself to like be in that flow and letting and knowing that whatever energy I have whether it's the energy to share this and speak this podcast if the energy is like to be completely exhausted and feel weird for being so tired or if the energy is to like have energy but not want to do anything and stare at the sky like every single impetus I have is actually in flow to me for me meeting my dream that flow doesn't only look like having energy and having forward movement and having joy that flow also looks like moving perceive a perceived moving backwards or a moving stillness these teachings also come through water i remember being at a slow moving river here higher a higher elevation i'm about at 2800 meters so i was maybe out in 3400 at a friend's house and I was observing the water and I could see that in the forward movement of the river, the motions were going in many different ways. There's pools of perceived stillness, like the water, the water is moving in these little whirlpools. Some, in some areas, the water is moving forward in a way that caused other mo- water to move backward. And this is all perception because actually the mo- like every instance of the water I'm seeing is changing the moment I'm seeing it so presence can never stay the same it just seems to be in certain patterns but actually the pattern is holding is ever different and the and the ways I'm perceiving stillness or forward or backward are, are actually all forward movements like all the molecules are moving forward towards a greater lake a greater ocean a greater river even though it moves through these patternings of perceived stillness or backward movement or sideways movement. It's all going forward. And I also felt like that was a really beautiful reflection for us. You know, as we have moments when we feel like we're in stillness or, you know, we have moments where I actually really don't believe in regression. I think we're always moving forward. We're just, I feel like it's a spiral path and we move deeper into, into any, everything like and deeper into aspects of a pattern we may be experiencing and to offer out a deeper wisdom a deeper knowing a deeper integration of that same thing and so that our forward movement is happening on another part of the river but it even though it doesn't seem like it is it always is and so yeah I guess it off it really allows us to have a lot of grace and relaxation with the ways and how we are because we can know that the impetus of our soul expression and our soul purpose is to flower and when we are taking the courageous steps for that flowering I feel like we have to have a lot of grace grace and patience and care for ourselves with the how the energy moves through us in that process of blooming So other places that this shows up for me is if is in like understanding our soul and auric field. So I feel like our soul and our energy field and auric field is hold our physical body. And I feel that we can connect with that aspect of ourselves as a natural ecosystem so in every ecosystem there are things that are naturally attracted to it and things are naturally averse to it like you won't naturally see a polar bear in a tropical rainforest because that's those that specimen needs a different environment so it's a naturally averse and so there's no boundary need to that needs to be made there's nothing that has to be done to keep the polar bear out of the the tropical rainforest it just won't be attracted to it because the aspects in that environment are not conducive to its flourishment so taking that example of nature into our own self if we can really cultivate the naturality of our natural ecosystem if we can really spend the time to know ourselves to deeply know ourselves to understand the edges and flows of our being like it's like not because we are also ever changing so it's I think it is as simple and it is um, so much more profound than like what we like and what we don't like. It's like knowing that the flavors and the tastes of our own energy, the nuances of our particular palate to sort of know the way source source flows through our particular individuation and to kind of have a flavor of that and to like know the impetuses of our intuition of our soul language to know how it feels in our bodies to really take the time to understand 
how the pulses and vibrations flow through us and how and what that means. I feel like we live in the field of knowing and knowing is what knows us. So when we feel something in our gut or we feel an impulse, that is the field of consciousness of knowing, like speaking through us. And as we take time to cultivate our understanding of that, we grow we grow our strength in that connection. We deepen our roots and our foundation. And so as we do that, like as we know the colors of our aura, as we know the taste of our soul, as we like know the the sounds of our personal inner language, we really are cultivating and spending time to nourish the field of our own intuition. And as we do that, we, we really fortify an, our natural ecosystem. And I we create what I call natural boundaries because in that, if we're not resonant to um, a a certain person's energy or a certain aspect that doesn't lead to our flourishment, it will just kind of naturally leave or we won't even perceive it. You know, we can also put these like natural um, vortexes of energy within our fields, like naturally just clear energy and just allow the things that are for our growth to enter our field. And so that doesn't mean that hard things won't come in or things that don't promote growth or trigger us. But they'll be at such a vibrational match that they'll just be correct for us. Like it won't necessarily be easy or what we perceive of as easy or or good, but it will be extremely correct for our growth and evolution and the knowing of our own ecosystem even better and and better. You know, that term of we create our own reality and and we can live in our own timeline dimension. I feel like what I'm expressing is kind of the nuanced understanding of what that means. So when we are living the same way, the tropical rainforest just won't attract a polar bear. Therefore, that tropical rainforest is living in its own time frame reality. And it's not living in one when where there are like polar bears and snow and ice. I mean, granted, we're in a climate evolution, so anything can happen. But natural, but like in natural, as we have conceived it so far, um, that won't happen and it just won't happen naturally. And so therefore in the Arctic and in the tropical rainforest, those are two timelines and so it's two dimensions that have its own food, its own seasons, its own cycles, its own, so it's like all connected to the circadian rhythm of this beautiful earth. But in this diversity, they each are able to kind of live in their own realms, equally beautiful, equally correct, just extremely different and equally radiant. And so we too can sort of, live in a beautiful radiant environment timeline that really promotes the beauty of ourselves and that doesn't necessarily need to interact with something that's extremely different than us it just won't we just won't be matched it just won't resonate um and so i feel like there is deep beauty into coming into deep intimacy with knowing ourselves and really spending time seeding and and cultivating and getting to know our gardens and i feel like it's important to say that it's not only to form it, it's re- like form it as we imagine ourselves or we imagine we need to be, but to deeply listen to how we are. So in the words I'm saying, it's to really see how we are. So it's not as if we're going into the rainforest and axing it to be the Arctic. It's instead we're listening to the rainforest or the temperate forest and seeing what rhythms are already there. And it's as if we're seeing the aspects of our own like natural soul that are present and we are leaning into ourselves, being ourselves more. And then that way we can release conditioning or release aspects that others have put onto us. And there's a, there's a security and comfort and rootedness because it is of that which is present and it is of that which is so natural and innate within us and we as we know that innate innateness we can externalize it and live from it and share it and that way it may seem different than others but it's there's a security that is not so easy easily shaken because it's so of essence it's so of essence that yeah, it's there's a there's an undeniability to it, and it doesn't mean it doesn't form and change, and morph, but it morphs within the beautiful parameters of its own like forward growth and evolution, and there's a trust that can really be cultivated and relaxed into from that state. So these are 
And this is another example of how living like a plant, like really living like a plant and living in neutrality can really support and allow us to really be in care and grace and relaxation with our own way of being. So something else I want to speak about that's like in this, um, in this, the vein of this tangent, the vine, (laughs) the vine of this tangent is the natural matrix. So this is something that has come up for me many times. And I mentioned trees in one of my other, and they, they said to me, Oh, and and when your next podcast, talk about the natural matrix. I might've talked about it in that one, but I'll talk about it again. I don't know if I shared it in this way. So the matrix movie, or some say the documentary, you know, where Neo and all that stuff, and we're all plugged in behind our neck which is called the mouth of God chakra and also some, and also called the Atta Chakana chakra, which is like a really important energetic place. And you can see that like the neck is in some ways the connection between, I think of it, you know, if we think of our head as the God head or like the cosmic antenna, you know, and that's also our physical head, but really our crown chakra and beyond. It's, it's, a, it's like our cosmic channel. And then if you think of the, like the earth, the body, like the neck, our, our throat chakra, the Ashtakana, this is the bridge between the heavens and the, the, the earth, you know, the stars and the soil. And it's a, I think it's a place where a lot of people hold trauma and tension. A lot of people have neck problems or like or have tension in their shoulders. There's a lot that can get stuck there. And that's a whole other story. But I also feel like there are ways that we are connected. You know, we can't literally see what's connect, like what sort of, um, what's in like uh excuse me what arm or needle is coming through this alta chakana chakra this mouth of god chakra but i do feel energetically that it is a port of programming and so something that i've practiced and i've seen and it's actually really beautiful because i haven't sh- i don't share this often but someone saw it i was in the interstitial with some group that i course i teach and i forget what we were tuning into but one of the participants like described exactly what I see as a natural matrix. And I said that to her and she's like, oh my gosh, yeah, that's exactly what I was seeing. And so I feel like this is a part of programming and it can be used in whatever way. And so we can, in some ways, reprogram ourselves into naturality by connecting with branches and vines and like with trees and connecting with the natural matrix through this this point of behind, right at the nape of our neck, the mouth of God chakra. So I feel the nat. So I do feel um like a mate like to live in a grid in a matrix is such a natural thing. I think we we as as being within the body, there are just systems that are in place, and there, these systems don't actually have to be the problem. It's it's where the intention of that system is coming from, and if we can naturalize that system back into earth and back into love, and if we can naturalize our personal systems back into earth and back into love. And so if you think of the mycelial mat, if we think of any like tree, we know there's a beautiful intelligence to trees and that trees are such a vital part of our existence. Like we would not have oxygen without them, but also I feel that they are very much like if we were look at our lungs, they would see, they look like trees. Like they are so much a part of us. And when we mm, allow our consciousness to synthesize back into connection, connection with them, I feel like we allow our experience to uh, like expand in back into that unity consciousness that's present here, you know, that's that we're all a part of and I feel like connecting with nature is such a beautiful way for us to really remember that, to remember the unity um within and beyond separation. And so a practice that I feel is really beautiful that I do, and you can either like lean against a tree or lean on the, or lay on the ground or just imagine that you're leaning against a tree trunk. And as you're leaning against a tree trunk, you can really feel that this is the tree of life, like the ever tree of life, and that it's a really beautiful tree. So uh, so if you're literally doing it against a tree, I would imp- like really access that tree permission, feel into the energy of this tree and see if this is a tree to commune in this way with. And if it's not, find a tree that is. And even then, like ask the tree and like be conscious and kind of uh, 
superimposing and like kind of calling forward the the tree of life like of ever life so that you're you're in the tree of life like the of 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 deep and profound grace and eternality and infiniteness and so if you're not physically with the tree you can just like kind of imagine this in your in your inner vision and to lean against there and to feel your spine connecting with the bark of the tree and to feel this part of your neck in some ways opening and like orically communicating with the aura and energy of the tree of life and opening your this port, this portal to the natural matrix and reprogramming yourself like your our brain neurons our neural systems is an inner mycelial mat and we can return reprogram these neurons to the mycelial mat of nature and like through that of the cosmos and of the multi-dimensional multiverse and really remembering the body to its cosmic star nature through the earth and through naturality and so I feel like this is a really beautiful, beautiful practice. Again, like living as a plant, living as nature and reminding ourselves of being that. So as you imagine yourself leaning against the tree and just allowing that expression and communication to open, just slowly feel your field relaxing and opening. And as, as if the energy, and you might see it as vines or branches or just like light, it's white or yellow or green like coming in to this portal between your neck and just feel the tree um i really feel like it's a conversation of releasing and giving and for and like for you too to be an agent of receiving and giving for the tree and to really be in partnership like to really be in partnership with nature and in some ways healing that the, this, that severed connection that some like we have as humanity and nature there's a way that there's a lot of human versus wilderness instead of human in a part of being an expression of wilderness and so your consciousness is repairing that bridge and it's healing your being and it's also healing that connection of all of humanity with with nature so allowing ourselves to be a conduit of this healing for ourselves personally and for the collective is so profound and it really also restores the light grid, it rest restores the Gaia grid, it restores um, like the earth and frequency within you and within the collective. So feeling yourself as this, as, as this bridge of restoration, as a being of restoration and give deep gratitude, deep thanks to the choice you've made to, to reconnect, to remember, and deep gratitude to the tree that has come in like such beauty as such an agent of healing and blessings to you and to, and to all aspects of you. And so deep, deep gratitude and just feeling your heart connected to this, feeling this healing along your spine and along your whole body and opening your heart in gratitude. And as you're ready, you can either leave the tree if, if it's in physicality or, you know, exit your meditation from this inner visioning. And I feel like anytime we do anything like this, when we're working with nature or any sort of spirit or entity, gratitude, like deep gratitude through the grace of source and or God, whatever word feels appropriate for you to, I feel like that's such a great closing prayer. And it's just a way and like coming into the heart and expressing God gratitude through source or through God. And it's a way and also in closing, it's, I, I like to say, um, closing prayers of any energy that was released in this moment, may be released through every timeline and dimension and completely through all of my energy and auric fields as well as like the collective and ancestral auric fields and whatever healing and love w was received during this time may it be integrated in its perfect divine timing through every field of my auric field 
the ancestral and collective fields, something like this, where we're phrasing feels appropriate for, to you to really encapsulate and crystallize the experience and just as a way of transitioning. I feel opening and closing prayers are really, really beautiful, but also it's really beautiful just to live a life of prayer, like to really see it as one evolution. And it's we're constantly transitioning through energies and through phases. And as we're more conscious of it, it's really beautiful to consciously close and open, but also as I talked about natural boundaries, to kind of be in that ever grace and to kind of have fortified your own in, environment to a state where you're naturally opening and closing in prayer and to kind of have that like as a default setting in your environment. And we can cultivate our, our beings to that degree. Because I feel, again, if we were to look at nature, I feel like it leans into each other naturally and there's naturally energetic exchanges and naturally energy coming and leaving and I'm not sure if they're always and it's conscious of consciousness and in that way it's always in prayer so I'm I guess I'm just saying both everything is beautiful please say it consciously and please be aware and live a life of blessing and prayer that it's like kind of set within your environment So I feel the last um, sharing I have of this living as a plant, living as nature has to do with our service and like being of service to others and being of service to the planet. I work as an intuitive energy healer and I'm really, really grateful. To, I love my work. I feel like what I do is an extension of who I am, that my doing is really deeply, deeply my being. And I feel really grateful to have realized that and to the extent I have at this time and open to how life continually changes. Um, and for me personally, you know, I think there's a lot of healers and energy workers who are really grateful to be in service and to help others. And I feel that way, but really... The why I do my work is because it's just, it's like breathing for me. It's just an extension of who I am. I don't do it because I feel like I need to or because people, like, there is need and there is trauma. and But also, we're also, there's also in that same vein, there's nothing to heal. And the, the same way we have trauma, we have innate wisdom and we have innate wholeness. And we have just like scar tissue and we built up cartilage in our forgetting of that. And I support people in their remembering. But the remembering is 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 so intrinsic to us. And so I feel where I position myself is once again, like for me doing the work I do is like a plant receiving sun and, and growing flowers and receiving rain and growing, growing flowers. It's so natural to me. And it, I just... I just love it. It's just a part of who I am and it's an extension of who I am. And so in that way, I am no more, no less in service than the sun that that receives, that gives sunlight and there's photosynthesis, photosynthesis that happens in the plant. And then um, it, 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 is, it blooms and it grows and it changes and it bears fruit. You know, there is an innate service there, but it also is just a cycle of life. And so I wonder if we were all to look at our work and our service and purpose as like what is so intrinsically innately in the cycle of our personal life. And that will, it does have an affect, like it does include others and it does include service and doing and it includes all these things. But I feel for me, there's a deep relaxation in that I really, my work really is just an extension of me living and there's such a deep relaxation to that. And I wonder if we, if many of us, if all of us could really find the work that really is just the extension of our breathing, of our living, of us receiving the sunlight and the rain and the air. And then how does that extend outside of us? Like, what does that look like? I feel like that's such a beautiful quandary as a place to figure out if we're in wondering like you know what is our service and offering to the planet it's like really what is that thing that feels like breathing to us 
and that brings us to life. And it doesn't mean that we don't ever feel tired or we don't ever not want to do it or, or, or any of those things. It's just that there is a relaxation that can foster trust, that fosters sharing, that fosters a consistency that enables a growth that's really soulful and beautiful. So I feel like I've definitely said a lot of words and like relaxation was one of them and trust is another because when I observe nature, I observe rela- like just being in the isness of essence, which is to me being in an extremely relaxed state that is actually extremely productive and prosperous and prolific. And I really feel like from a relaxed state is when we are able to really grow and produce and fruit and bloom and we really allow life itself because life has an impetus to grow and when we relax we allow the impetus of life to like grow through us and in some ways we we get to just follow we get to follow that stream of vitality and trust how it ebbs and flows into rest and into action So thank you all for being with me and sharing with me on my exploration of living as a plant, living as nature, recalibrating oneself into and as the natural matrix. I hope the sharing has felt resonant with you. And if you have any inquiries around connecting in with your own naturality I'm, I'm here I have shared another podcast I'm sharing again I, if you've listened this far and you would like to do a session with me I would love to offer you a discount you can book a session with me on the in the link below and you can enter pod 33 as a discount code pod 33 and that will get you 33 dollars off of a session with me So if this interests you, I look forward to meeting you more intimately. And if not, just thank you so much for listening this far. I deeply, deeply appreciate getting to walk this journey, this path with you all. Deep blessings and deep love.